All right, everyone. We are going to start working on a little oil wash. This is one of the ways I do things. I see people using um, AK Interactive stuff. I haven't tried it yet, and I may try it sooner or later. I bought an artist oil color set a while back. It's got like eight, nine different colors to it, and I've been able to mix up whatever color I want pretty much. And that color set's going to last me forever. I found these little stainless steel bowls the other day, and I could use them for this, and I thought about it for a second, and I saw a um, bottle cap, and I said to myself, I'm just going to use the bottle cap. Now, something about using oil paints, they take quite a while to cure up, which is an advantage when you're doing something like this, you're doing the wash, okay, because if you don't like the results, you just get rid of it. So let me zoom in a little bit. What I have here on my toothpick is more oil paint than I will ever, ever use on a whole model. It doesn't take much of this stuff. All right, and I'm not caring whether it's glossy or dull right now because I'm just trying to make an oil wash out of this. I have some turpenoid right here. And I'm going to pour a little turpenoid in there just to thin it out a little bit. Not much. I'm thinning this out quite a bit with that turpenoid. Because again, I just want to highlight those lines and I want to see what's going on. You can do panel washes with this stuff. Use black, brown, whatever color you want. You can see I got a nice brown going right now. You can also see, let me slide that away. Let me clean up the, what I got on my desktop. I got some on the card. But that's the fun thing about oil washes. Gone. Because I literally have a little while to get that done with. Let me pull the camera back. Wrong way. A little bit. And I'm going to take a Q-tip. I'm just going to run it along this lines. Okay. And we're going to smear this stuff in there to highlight any mistakes, grooves, scratches that are around it. Okay? Alright, now that that's done, I'm going to take a piece of paper towel. And try to remove it a little bit. Okay, it's not getting in the way the way I like, so I'm going to next up take a Q-tip and I'm going to dip, dip the Q-tip in the turpenoid and we're going to lighten that up some. All right. Just right around where those are. I have to be careful because I'm removing my pencil as well. That's not a surprise to me, to be honest with you guys. I pretty much remember which one's which, and I'll call rewrite the pencil on there in a minute. Okay. A little bit of turpenoid, and that's cleaning up just the way I wanted it to. And you can also clean it up using just a clean toothpick. A clean uh, Q-tip like I am right here. There we go. All cleaned up. Now if I zoom in on this, let me rewrite what's what. This was DP1, DP2, this is X1, the back. This is X2, the front. This is Tamiya 1, this is Tamiya 2. Okay. What I'm looking for when I evaluate my scorecard here is consistency. I want to see how consistent it is, how clean the groove is, that sort of thing. All right, so let's do a zoom where you guys can see this. Actually, let me move the camera a little bit. And I'm going to zoom in even tighter than normal since we got a nice clean card here. There's the first run with the dental pick. Didn't do so hot. 
Okay, you can see there's some extra grooves around it and stuff like that. Second row of the dental pick. That groove isn't cleanly, it's not a good clean groove. I don't know if the camera's picking up, but I suspect it probably is. Yeah, especially if I do that, you can see that that groove is actually raised up above the surface. That's not what I want. Now the back of the X-Acto knife made a really nice panel line. Okay. Did fairly nice. The groove's pretty consistent. I can run my fingernail through there and it feels pretty good. You can see with my oil wash that it came out without any real skips around it. Just the start of it's not good. It's not consistent at the start. The front of the blade, you guys can see that there's some skipping around in here. I start moving this thing where the light's catching it. You can see there's all sorts of badness to it. I should do that with the the back of the blade. So the back of the X-Acto knife that's been chipped off looks good to me. Okay. Now let's get to the Tamiya Scriber. Okay. You'll notice the X-Acto knife at the very beginning has some waviness to it. All right. It's not really consistent or clean. Let's look at the Tamiya's both lines on this now I, I will admit that consistency and the cleanness might be from me not starting at the exact same spot every single time but back to the Tamiya's the Tamiya lines are cleaned out so is the X-Acto knife they seem to be this one is really nicely done you can see that the groove is there just like you want it um, looks to be very well yeah, I like the Tamiya groove. I like the back of the X-Acto knife groove as well. So here's my conclusion to this. Okay, let me get my face back in the picture here. So I'm talking to you guys instead of like the floor. Here's my conclusion here. Get the old man glasses off. First off, dental pick. Thing of the past. It's going away. You know, I have to get some sandpaper to clean up that line. With the other two methods, I don't. So that dental pick, gone. All right. Now, to me, a scorer versus the back of an X-Acto blade that's been nipped off. Requires replacement blades. Requires replacement blades. Happy thought with this one. I can use the blade until it's dull, chip off the top of it. Now I got a scribing blade. Back of that's never going to go dull. Don't know how often that's going to go dull. I suspect not that often because we're not really using the cutting edge of the blade. The cutting edge of the blade is not the part we're using. So they're both basically the same tool. You want to know the truth. Okay? They both gouge out the plastic the same way. Most of you already have one of these. Some of you have one of these. This was $13 on eBay. I've been using this same X-Acto knife for a very long time. In fact, I have a nice scar on this finger from that X-Acto knife. Okay, we're not going to get into it, but this knife did that. I like how this pulled. I like the form factor of this but it's not necessary if you have one of these. Just get yourself some nippers, take off the tip of the blade, and use the back of it, don't use the front. And you'll get good panel lines. All right, so I did my evaluation, my panel line tools. I'm gonna to use the Tamiya one, because I have it. If you don't wanna spend the money, back of an X-Acto knife blade does almost the exact same job. Seriously, looking at these things, Can you guys tell me which one's different? This one line looks different because I didn't clean it out as well. Here, let me get in there. Let me do some uber cleaning on that one just like I did the other ones. There you go. Which one looks different? You know, I can actually feel going across here where the plastic's raised up. I can't on these. 
So that might be the only real difference between using the black back of the blade and the Tamiya Scriber. The Tamiya Scriber leaves the pla plastic flush, whereas the back of the X-Acto knife blade raises, leaves you a little raised surface along the edge. But you know what I'm willing to bet? Get yourself a little sandpaper, just hit it a little bit, and you won't notice that that is raised. You won't. So in conclusion, I'm going to use it to me a scriber because it's going to require less cleanup work. It's going to take me a little bit to get used to it, so I'm going to practice on the other side of the sheet a little bit. This I'm already comfortable with handling. Eh, I might do a little bit more evaluation, but I bet I end up using the Tamiya Scribe tool simply because I have it. And I like the way it was pulling on the plastic. It felt pretty interesting when you pull it. And it leaves a really clean surface. Whereas the back of this guy doesn't. That alone right there. That trial right there, let me zoom in a little bit, told me the Tamiya blade does a better job. This is the X-Acto knife blade and I can feel a raised surface there. I can't on the Tamiya side. This one's the Tamiya. This one's the X-Acto. Can't feel it. So I'm going to use the Tamiya scriber. So there's my conclusion. Describing. Different scribe tools. Dental pick gone. The thing from the hobby shop, don't even know what this thing is, who makes it, it says plastic cutter on it, okay? No, I'm not going to use it. It's got the same shape blade as the Tamiya scriber and I'm sure it'll do the same shape. I can't figure out how to change the blade. I'm not going to go there. The Tamiya tool is very simple, very easy. Unscrew this, put a new blade in, it comes with spare blades. Okay, you know, I'm just going to use this Tamiya tool. There you go, I'm starting to ramble, time to go. I gotta get working on the A-Wing. So I'll be back once I get those panel lines scribed. Alright, we're gonna be using the Dymo tape to do it with to make sure I get them straight. Alright guys, back later.